So uh, my name is Dan Laird. I am the Media and Design Specialist with Canvas Technology Services, and I work quite a bit with Zoom and Panopto on campus. And today I'm going to show you how to export your videos from both of those services. And I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so I'm gonna start with Zoom. So in order to uh, export a video from Zoom, you're gonna to need to log into the Zoom webpage. So that's zoom.us, click sign in. And right here, uh, you're gonna to wanna to select the SSO option. That's our single sign on. So in order to get into the Oswego domain, you need to click on SSO after clicking sign in. And our company domain is oswego-edu. So you put that in there, you click continue. And if I'm already signed in to our single sign-on, but if you weren't, then it would bring up your account and then you'd have to put in your LakerNet ID and password. So I already did that. So, so once you get in here, uh, if you have any meetings, you're going to have them listed here. Um, if you have recordings that you would like to export, over here in the menu, there's a recordings option. So you click on that. And if you have uh, any Zoom videos that you've recorded and uploaded to the cloud, they'll show up in here. Um, when you do a recording in Zoom, you have the option to either upload to the cloud or save it locally. So if you choose the save locally option, you don't need to export because your video is already on whatever computer you're using. Um, so those, anything that you save locally will not show up in the cloud or other words on the Zoom server. So only things that you select to be saved to the cloud will show up in here. So I only have one video in here. And as you can see, it has three files um, that I can download. Uh, usually uh, what Zoom will have, there's a transcript of whatever um, spoken word is in the video. There is an audio file that's kind of like a podcast file that just has, you know, audio available. And then there is an MP4, which is the video that has audio and video. So those are the three files that normally are available in here to download. So if you click on the, these three dots at the end, you have the option to download all three files. And it'll give you this prompt, each file will download separately. Um, I don't really, you know, that's fine, but I don't need it to remind me of that again. So next time it'll just up, go right to the download. So I'm just gonna go to my downloads folder. And this is going to take the video file and save it in there. And then it's going to take the second file, which is probably the audio, save it. And then you can see it says dot transcript. So this is the transcript of that video. So it saves that as well. So that is how you export uh, your files from Zoom. Uh, we do, just as a kind of general note, uh, we have limited space in Zoom. So uh, it's probably a good idea uh, if you have anything in here at the end of a semester to download it uh, and just get it out of here because we do schedule purges of uh, the files that are in Zoom periodically. And usually I, I think typically we have a, a year lead time. So it'll be um, like if we're starting the spring 2022 semester uh, we'll be uh, purging anything prior to the spring 2021 semester. So um, usually it's sort of that timeline. Sometimes it changes, but um, if you do have anything in here at the end of a semester, it would be a good idea to, if you wanted to archive it for your own purposes, uh, to come in here and do that. So does anybody have any questions about how to export videos out of Zoom before I move on to show you Panopto? Jay, can you see my laptop screen? Yes, I can. 
Yes, okay. I can. Thank you. Yeah, and for Zoom, Dan, I use local because I need that content right with me, and then I can drag it into okay. Adobe and start working. You know, so. But I appreciate knowing how to go from the cloud and. Yeah, things. it's more for like uh, a lot of faculty. There's a, a Blackboard plugin for Zoom that automatically takes the. Uh, the cloud recordings and makes links inside of Blackboard so students can watch the videos. So it's kind of more for that purpose. That's usually you, the only thing that you'd want to have a cloud uh, recording. Is if you're using the Blackboard. Okay, that's right. Have you uh, taken a look how D2L is going to do that yet or no? No, but um, usually with uh, the, the different LMSs, the, the LTIs are pretty similar. Like they, they're all pretty much cookie cutter and look the same. So I would expect you know, D2L is a major LMS, so I, I'm, right. I would expect the interface to look pretty similar. So nice. it probably would work. I, I would be 90% 90, 90 sure it's virtually the same. So, right. Which is good. Yeah. As far as a training standpoint, because, you know, you start with a new system. You oh, my God. Yeah. Little hic as hiccups and learning curve as possible. Definitely. So, uh, for Panopto, if you have a Panopto folder, you can either access it through uh, Blackboard, which a lot of people do, or you can go through um, directly to their website. Um, we do have a, a, Pan a Panopto page on CTS. Uh, let's see. It's a swigo.edu slash CTS slash Panopto. So this will give you some information about Panopto and setting it up. Um, but you can either go through uh, Blackboard or you can go th directly to the Panopto page, which is uh, swigo.hosted.panopto.com. So usually um, faculty that use Panopto in their courses will go through Blackboard and access their files through there. So that's the easiest way. Okay, so if you're in your folder and you're looking at your videos and say this first one in your list is something that you'd like to download and have a copy of it outside of Panopto. So if you hover over here and click on the settings button, that'll bring up this menu. Over here on the left, click on outputs. And this will give you a couple different options of files you can download. You can see right here, uh, video podcasts, which is just another name for video file. Um, you can download it as is, which by default, it's picture in picture. So with Panopto videos, usually you've got a camera that's um, videotaping the instructor talking. And then in the background, you have whatever's on the screen of the computer, usually a PowerPoint or a slide presentation or whatever they're presenting in class. So by default, this chooses picture in picture. So little talking head down the, the bottom and then the rest of the screen will be uh, the slide you're presenting. Um, if that's fine with you, then all you gotta do is click download podcast and then go to the folder. I'm gonna go to my downloads folder again and click save. And that will download an MP4 of that video uh, to my download folder. Say for whatever reason you didn't care to have the person in the front of the room. Like if, if that talking head portion of the screen is kind of blocking what you're presenting and you would like just what you're presenting to be in the video, you can do uh, secondary video only, I believe it is, yep. Um, your, the talking head is the primary video. The secondary video is the screen capture. So say you just wanted the screen capture, you can click on this, make that change and click apply. And it'll say change the podcast type. This will cause the podcast to be temporarily unavailable while your changes are being processed. Click OK. So what this is going to do, so when you make that change, the system has to generate another file because it, it needs to make a file that doesn't have the talking head in it. So it'll take, I mean, for a video this size, it's like seven minutes long. It'll probably take 10 to 15 minutes to process. For a normal class, it's like an hour. It might take 15 minutes to process. But after the server is done creating that file, that um, 
that download podcast button will be back here. So it takes a little bit for it to process the file, just like any other video process takes after being rendered. So yes, yeah, uh, you have a question? Uh, yes, uh, two questions. First, is the quality matters? Uh, are there options? And especially if you want to reuse this video uh, for future lectures, what should we download as a quality? I don't really change it from the default. And normally, you've got these are your options. Um, normally, by default, the software in Panopto will do either 720 or 1080. Um, but we don't normally have people change the defaults on the settings. Um, you can if you want to. It, the only, I mean, it'll have a better picture, obviously, but the audio quality and the um, content of the slides, it really doesn't matter too much about the resolution with that. The resolution will only really have an effect on the talking head. And if that's... You know, if yeah. you've got like, say, if you have a guest speaker and you would, and that's the primary thing is someone talking in front of the room, then you might want to up the quality just so that if you wanted to save that file and then, you know, put it on your web page, like you could upload this to YouTube and post it into, you know, your department page or yeah. share it with colleagues. So the second, yeah, it's up. Yeah, the, the second question is usually uh, Panopto also generates uh text as well too uh, right. uh, but when you download it it doesn't download that is that correct right this is just the video if you wanted to do the caption download that would be in the caption menu you can go in here and then you'll see uh available captions there's an english file in here and you can download the file separately so and then this is just separately separate file right so how, how can we use that if the, I don't know, I mean, does it, it depends on what video that? service you're using because these captions are not burned into the file. So they're a separate file. So separate if you're going to say you're uploading into Vimeo or YouTube, that always handles caption files separately. It doesn't burn it into the video. I got so. you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> so uh, let's see. Have we done that? No, it's still processing. So, and like I, like I said, you can have, you know, if you just wanted the primary, say if you just wanted, if you just had a person presenting like a guest speaker and they didn't have slides to go over, then you could just have the primary video if you wanted to. You can also do a side-by-side, -side, which I, I don't really use that too often, but it's there, so. Okay, that, pretty much covers both of these. Um, did any of you have any other questions? Uh, I mean, a couple of years ago when I first used Panopto, I download, I don't remember how I downloaded things, but I downloaded and it has like for each video, multiple files. Yep. Uh, which I don't, I don't know even, are those usable or should I just, should I just dump those and then we download everything again. <clears throat> um, there, within those files are the MP4s, which is just the video with the audio already built in. But sometimes it separates out because it will save the presentation. Like if there's a PowerPoint associated with this recording, it'll save that. It'll save the caption file. Then it'll save an audio file, sure. and then it'll save a video file. So all that does get. You know, there's another way to download that stuff, but for this, this is just the video file. So it's up to you. I mean, you would have to sift through all the other files. I mean, if it's easier, you might just want to get rid of it and then do it this way. So yeah. it depends how many you have, I guess. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. And a quick question. So once we download these things, once we move into uh, D2L, is that what it is called, the new management system? Yeah, that's the new LMS. Yeah. Are we still going to continue to have the Panopto in there or? Yeah, there's going to be an LTI. Like, it's going to it's gonna look the same as it does now in Blackboard. Um, okay. It's just really putting this Panopto folder into inside another window. So it's, it's going to have the same look and feel as it does now. So um, if I download, yeah, if I download these videos, 
Yep. And then when I, when I move into the D2L, can I just upload this video in there or is it just going to be a video upload? I'm not sure if how they're going to treat that. I know right now with Blackboard, you're, they discourage you from uploading videos directly into Blackboard. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to be different with D2L. Um, I, I haven't heard. So right now, um, we're kind of, we discourage people from keeping videos in Zoom. Uh, we were telling people to keep their videos in Panopto, but they've now told us that they're going to be imposing space limitations on our server. So we're kind of like the only service that we offer right now that doesn't have a space limitation are the uh, are the um, YouTube accounts that are associated with our Swigo Google account. So for some reason, the videos that we upload into YouTube um with our work accounts aren't taking up space in our our you know if you look at the space being taken up by each person on campus youtube collections aren't being registered so that's the only thing right now that i would really recommend people putting their stuff into and not having to worry about you know having to purge it and you know i got you so i mean it, yeah man and, and plus youtube's a fairly easy interface to you know manage videos with so it's you know it's designed to manage video, so it works nice if you want to share them out or put them into your um, your courses. So, I mean, the only thing is in YouTube, I don't know how I don't want to make it public, so I don't know what right. is this way of doing it. Yeah, yeah, that's the only thing is you'd have to have it unlisted, which doesn't technically make it private. It's just you know, um, it's not shared out and indexed in in search engines, but. Um, yeah, any student that could grab the link could, you know, take it and put it somewhere else if they wanted to. So you're right, there, there is that concern. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right, I think that's it.